2013 was an interesting year in gaming history. The Xbox One released, the 2DS released, GTA 5 came out, Call of Duty Ghosts came out, and Sony managed to destroy every other console manufacturer with the PS4 which released on November 15, 2013 in the United States. As a competitor to the Xbox One, the only thing Sony needed to do to win this console generation was to give it a cheaper price tag, allow offline play, and literally roast Microsoft during the console's E3 presentation. And believe it or not, it actually worked. I'll go more into detail about that later in this video. Compared to Sony's past consoles, the PS4 design was much more simple. While the PS3 had a circular top design, with that Spider-Man PS3 font, the PS4 was more of a flat brick. Several PS4 revisions were produced, including the PS4 Slim that I have here. Up front are the power and eject buttons, Blu-ray drive, and two USB 3.0 ports. Around back, there's the power input, HDMI, Ethernet port, and proprietary port for the PlayStation camera. Some consoles also have an optical audio port. Every console has a hard drive that can easily be swapped out with another drive. It could either be another drive of higher capacity or a solid state drive for fast loading times. I did make a video on how to do this. If you would like to see that video, it will be linked in the description. Games came on Blu-ray discs just like the PS3. These discs can hold up to 50 gigabytes of data. Despite using the same disc type, it's not backwards compatible with any past PlayStation consoles, even though the PS4 is more than capable of emulating the PS1 and PS2. The controller was a huge improvement from the PS3. It was more comfortable, had better triggers, and it included a touchpad. The controller also supports Bluetooth, which made it easy to use with a phone or PC. It was still rechargeable, just like the PS3 controller, but it instead used a micro USB connector, the same connector used on most Android phones at the time and still used today. The console specs were impressive at the time. It had an 8-core AMD processor at 1.6 GHz, 8 GB of GDDR5 memory, a 500 hard drive at minimum, and an AMD Radeon-based GPU with 1.84 teraflops of power. These specs are an area where the console shines, as the Xbox One uses slower memory and had a weaker GPU. When you compare the specs of the PS4 to the PS3, there's a large difference, especially compared to newer consoles like the PS5 when they are compared to the PS4. It seems like upgrades in technology are just getting slower over time. There were many games on PS3 that made it to PS4, which definitely had some improvements over the previous version. One great example of this is Grand Theft Auto V, which not only runs at a higher resolution on PS4, but runs at a more stable 30fps and has better textures and better draw distance compared to the PS3. The same thing applies when comparing the Xbox 360 and Xbox One versions of this game. Speaking of the Xbox One, during the E3 2013 presentation, Sony was able to completely destroy Microsoft. The Xbox One presentation was criticized for focusing more on the media features than actual games, and it only got worse when the price tag was revealed to be $499. At $499 in the US, and 499 euros in European markets. It could only get better than that, right? No, it went worse. The Xbox was planned to have a very strict DRM system for physical game discs that you would buy from GameStop, and that they would be tied to your Xbox account and couldn't be traded in, and if you wanted to lend the game to your friend, they were required to be your Xbox Live friend for at least 30 days. The console was also revealed to be always online, which meant if you get disconnected from the internet, you couldn't play your games until you get back online. Moments later, Sony hopped on stage and announced that the PS4 would be cheaper, would work offline, and, of course, it supported to use games. Thanks. Eventually, Microsoft decided to reverse all of their decisions, but it was already too late. The Xbox One was already on the road to failure. In the end, the Xbox One only sold 58 million units compared to the PS4's 117 million. The PS4 also had an excellent lineup of games. There are some excellent first party titles including Gran Turismo, God of War, Spider-Man, Uncharted, Horizon, and The Last of Us. Some of these games have recently made it to PC, just like a lot of Xbox exclusives, which received PC ports way before PlayStation games did. There is also a good selection of remasters and cross-platform games. Games that are cross-platform between PS4, Xbox, and Nintendo Switch tend to run better on PS4 due to it having more powerful hardware. When the console released, it retailed for $399 in the US, $100 cheaper than the Xbox One, but also $100 more expensive than the Wii U. Several revisions were made, including the PS4 Slim, which cost $299, and the PS4 Pro, which was $399. The standard PS4 and PS4 Slim had very few differences other than the design, hard drive location, and power consumption. 
The Slim also has faster Wi-Fi that supports 5GHz. Not the biggest upgrade, especially for those that use a wired connection, but for some players, this is still a nice addition. Today, you can find one for around $150. Games are still being released for the PS4 as of 2024, although it is mostly third-party titles. However, some newer games like Spider-Man 2 are only available for the PlayStation 5, while Spider-Man 1 and Miles Morales are available on the PS4 and PS5. Along with that, the next Grand Theft Auto game will only be released for the PS5 and Xbox Series consoles, so if that's a game you're waiting for, I would not recommend purchasing a PS4 right now. If you're looking to play the already large selection of games on PS4, this may be worth picking up if found at a good price. That's it for this video, I hope you found it helpful, and if you did, like this video, share it, and subscribe to the channel for more content like this, and I'll see you guys later.